Hello, music lovers. Uh, big episode this week regarding the writing process, and I gave you a bunch of tips to like start out um, in part one, right? It was all the kind of tips of like, you know, stripping away things, what time signature, light and dark, right? You can go check that out. Um, in, this, in the back half of it, it really gets into what my Patreon uh, member Neville requested, which was like how I differentiate writing in an instrumental environment for my solo stuff and then writing it for band environments, right? And, and now I want to shoot you to the second half of what I filmed and let you check out the concepts and the difference that I use and some of the self critique mechanisms I use on developing hooks, what's memorable, um, and also how to, how to write for a band that's got a, a vocalist, a little more commercial aspect, versus writing instrumental music, you know, knowing that that's never gonna be on the radio, right? Okay? Um, I hope you enjoy it, and uh, part two. Okay, so one of the things that, that applies to Andy Wood's solo music and doesn't apply to like Kennedy Wood Band, um, Andy Wood's solo music is, uh, it's guitar instrumental music, right? And so it's really important for me and to, to convey to the listener where the guitar solo is, right? So that sounds like I'm kind of crazy, right? The music is guitar solo instrumental music, but I still want you as the listener to know where the guitar solo is. So what does that mean? What does that mean exactly? In my opinion, it means that you build motifs and you have a verse and a chorus and a structure, right, of a song that people can remember and hum. And, and there's memorable hooks in it. Like, like let's take Cliffs of Dover. Like, we all know that, that main melody line. Um, For the love of God, Steve Vai, we know that main melody line. Like, the greatest instrumentals of all time, in my opinion, um, Into His Lovers. Like, we all know the main melodies and the main motifs that happen in those songs. But we also know, right, when the guitar solo starts. And by that, I mean the section of the song that's meant for the guitarist, the performer, to, like, let loose and shred it up and 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 improvise, right? Um, if you look at the Almond Brothers, I love the Almond Brothers and a tune like Jessica, you can tell that the song is structured and there's all the things that we remember in the melodies and all the things that we want to address as a listener. We want to hear that song. It's got to be a song first and then in it, there has to be a guitar solo in it. Uh, for me personally, in my taste buds, I don't like guitar instrumental music a lot of times these days. There's not a lot of memorable motifs that, that, that get their hooks in me. Now, on the flip side, when I do come across some guitar instrumental music that, that punches those buttons, right, me, and, and, and like, you know what I'm saying, and like hits those check marks for me, those things really, I become a mega fan of it. One of the things that I think in my style of instrumental music that comes across and I don't consider myself a fusion player in the traditional sense of jazz and rock fusion, but I, I, I consider myself a fusion player in the sense that I'm fusing country, jazz, rock, and bluegrass together, right? And for me, my bluegrass roots, and what I do love about jazz and bluegrass is the fact that everyone plays the melody of the tune, the main song, and then they all solo over it, all the musicians in the band, and then they come back and play that melody again, right? Uh, and that happens in bluegrass, that happens in jazz, that happens bebop, you know, uh, fusion tunes even, like songs like, you know, Gotta Match or Chromosome or any of those type of tunes. You can tell that there's the song and then the soloing section. That's really important for me um, from a compositional standpoint when I'm writing and creating. All right. So now let's talk about Kennedy Wood. How do I write for a band? For those that don't know, this is uh, my, my kind of Southern southern rock, country, blues. I don't really know what it is. It's just our, it's our own uh, mix of, of what we've got. And, and I think we get compared to Southern rock bands, but we have a lot of country influence, and a lot of blues influence. Um, me personally, I have a lot of Freddie King influence that I, that I bring to that band. I love Freddie King. I love you know, a lot of great blues players, and I, and I put that into that music. I think blues and southern rock, they go together. You know, the songs of the Delta, the songs of Electric Blues of Chicago, Texas Blues, all of that stuff mixed with the, the bluegrass, mixed with 
the country. That's that's like how we form our, our sound that makes us us, you know. So when I write for Kennedy Wood, it's an interesting process. That 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 inspiration thing that kind of comes from me messing around, just just practicing some riffing. And usually I pick a time signature. When I'm writing with Kennedy Wood, the first place I start is I'm like, man, I want to feel good, okay? Feel good time signatures, 120 BPM always feels good. It's like, I want something bouncy, I want something funky. Or I tell myself, I want something slow. And, and usually with Kennedy Wood, I pick the time signature first. The vibe of the time signature tells me the next, it leads me to the next question, which is what's the groove? And I choose the groove first, even if I'm just like, like I'm unplugged today for a reason, like, cause this is how I write. And like, I, I, I say, if this is the groove or if it's, I, I choose that first. That's really important. Um, from there, I start laying out simple chord progression. Very simple. I always start on the simple side and then I decide if it needs more. It's a lot like when I, when I grill a steak. Um, I have to have a really great cut of meat, right? A really great cut. And I'll spend more money to have that great cut. I want that fundamental strong, just like writing a song. I want that fundamental strong, that groove, simple chord progression. And then from there, I can season it and keep adding to. And, and that's a thing I think we all worry about when we're starting to write, or maybe we get writer's block. We're always afraid of like, Oh, is it cool enough? Worried about the opinion of my peers. You know, worried about if other guitar players thinks it's cool. I like, take that out the window, man. Is it memorable to you when you write something and you come back later that day? Are you still kind of humming that thing? You know, that's where you got to live in that, in that comparison to that stake. You got to have that really solid fundamental, that really, really, um, uh, that bedrock of groove and, and melodic idea. And simple always sticks with me. And then I can add in, maybe we need another chord progression here. Maybe we need more chords to move this melody along, right? Or maybe it's the opposite where it's like, man, I like the fact that it's just a one chord vamp over this verse, but we need a melody that's moving around. That's kind of that's kind of that phase of my Kennedy Wood writing. From there, I will lay out the tune with like just some scratch drums and some scratch guitars. I don't even necessarily worry if they're like super in tune or anything like that. I'm just trying to get the idea down. I'm going to quote Ben Eller again. Uh, we work together a lot. It, it, he always says, make the crappy version. Make the, make the version that sucks. And that way you're like, okay, well, this is the sucky version. Now all I have to do is polish it down, right? Completionism is like a thing that sneaks into our writing process too early in the process. We're like, oh man, it needs to have this, it needs to have this. It's like, man, put all those things to the side and just be like, does it groove? Does it feel good? Is the pocket good? Do I remember the melody? Are the hooks there? I, I would like to think, maybe I'm just talking to myself at this point, but I would like to think that over the course of my albums, um, you've seen a growth uh, as, as people that follow what I do in, in, in where Amalgam was disconcerting amount and then where like junk town is like that's four records apart right and uh for me there's a i can hear it i can feel it i can i felt better when i wrote junk town i'm in the midst of writing my next aw record and kennedy wood record if you were to look around my studio on the, the stuff that's out of camera you'd see big whiteboards big dry erase boards with all my notes and stuff on them and uh it's a process. It takes time. One of the things, though, that you really have to remember when you're when you when you're doing this stuff is is the song good before you put any hot licks in it. Like, is the basic core song good? And if it's not, what's what is it that you don't like? That's the thing that's really important, right? Do you like it? You don't have to worry about the opinion of your peers. Make the music you like. And if it's not the way you like it. Don't just say that it sucks. This is one thing I talk about with uh, patrons and students. Don't just say that you're like, oh, this sucks, I don't like it. Tell me why you don't like it. And if you can tell yourself what you don't like about the song, you can change it. You can find it and you can twist at it and change it. Now, am I gonna sit here and act like everything I've ever written, even recently, is like stuff that I'm super, like permanently like, oh yeah, it's the greatest thing ever. No, it's not like that. 
but it's the ability to take it and move to the next level, move forward. And with every album that I release, I look at those as, as like watermarks of like photographs of where I am as a musician. That's why I think building a body of work is very important, at least to me. Um, it's, it's not the thing that's like, you know, you get on Instagram and can somebody play or not? Well, at that point, you're like, yeah, like I can really play. And then I go to look for a body of work and it's like, well, now what's your musical statement? You know, where's that stuff? I need that. You know what I mean? I need that out of myself. And if I discover a player online and I love their playing and, and then I'm like, okay, where's the album? What can I listen to? This is stuff when I'm driving down the road, I want to be able to put on Spotify or whatever and listen to a, a, an, a an idea, a musical idea. Like when you listen to Resolution by Andy Timmons, it will floor you. It's a complete idea. It's a body of work, man. Uh, there's a really great podcast that I heard this week. Shout out to my boys over in England. Um, Beebs, Tom Quell, they do the Guitar Hour. Dan, all those guys, Jake, everybody over there that does that podcast is really, really great. And they had Nick Johnston on this week. And I texted Nick. Nick and I have done some shows together. And I, I love Nick. I, I adore the guy. I, and he, he, he has great playing and great tone, obviously. Um, but he goes into a, a mission statement that stays in his podcast. And uh, his mission statement was all about like, man, I just want to step back from, from social media. And, uh, you know, at this point I've written all the, uh, I've written this music and I've got these records and say same kind of thing. He's like, you know, I've tried to, with every album go, you know, make, make more of that bedrock, that content that, that if social media goes away tomorrow, he, you know, he's still got this bedrock that makes him a complete player where he could go play shows. Right. And that stuck with me because it echoed back to when I was on guitar hour podcast and I went on a tangent about writing an album and, and how everybody should write albums. I still feel that way. But I don't want it to be challenging for you guys. And I don't want you guys to be intimidated by the idea of writing. And uh, that's the trick, right? It's not about, it's not about um, writing your, your, you know, doing your, your Michelangelo Sistine Chapel on your first record. I mean, some of us never get those records. You know, making peace with the fact that you might not write Van Halen 1. That's okay, man. You're with the other 99.9% .9 of the human population that didn't write, you know, Passion and Warfare or, 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 or whatever. Or it doesn't even have to be a rock rock uh, album. I'm, those are just the first two records that came to mind, right? It, it can be anything, man. Um, you know, a lot of us are not going to write, <laughs> you know, Abbey Road or whatever. It's like, it's, it's okay. Um, what's not okay is is telling yourself that you can't do it, Right? That's not okay. Telling yourself that it's impossible for you to write a song, that's not okay. You can do this stuff. You can follow this little, this little guideline that I've given you today, and you can write music and, and, and make something longer than just some licks for your Instagram, right? And I hope that I'm, I don't sound like I'm dissing Instagram. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that like Instagram is like a commercial, in my opinion, for the player and it's like oh man that guy did a cool thing i want to hear his music right you could be the guy that's like hey man this is awesome music you know and if you've got great links and you got you, you feel good about your play man tag it up in the comments section i want to hear new music like anybody else you know we're all looking for new music um with that said i, I hope you enjoyed this episode and uh shout out to my man ps neville patreon um if you want your questions turned into episodes of The Woodshed or Under the Influence, uh, jump over to Patreon. Um, not trying to plug it. I'm just saying that that's kind of how I'm driving my content, right? People are supporting me. You want that. You want a certain subject matter. I'm going to hit it. And that's and I got to give props to everyone over at Patreon for, for supporting me. And uh, all of the love that we're getting over there. And, and that's why I want to do episodes like this. So, man, I know this was uh, not a licks kind of episode. Woodshed isn't about licks. You know, Woodshed is about music and, and concepts. You know, we had, to, we had to get off the ground, get it running. Um, it's about this kind of stuff. I want this stuff to be uh, stuff you can listen to and enjoy uh, and hopefully learn something from without having to feel like it's school time and you got to have your guitar in your hands because Andy said, play these notes in this order. Like, that's not it, man. Creation comes from you. 
sitting at home, playing through, practicing, and documenting. You know, that, that's where creation can come from. And a lot of times that's for me how it happens. I don't really, these days I don't really sit around and think, oh, I've got to write this kind of song. I've got to write this kind of song with this many notes, um, this, this many time signatures, this many chords. Like, that's not the way it should work. If the song requires a lot of notes and a lot of time signatures, then do it. If it doesn't require it, be okay with that too. And always know that there's a musical outlet for everything. You know, you as a person, as an artist, it's not just one thing that defines you. Like I have multiple things that, I, that, that, that I've been in, I, that I've been involved with. And if you look at your heroes, I look at my heroes. Like there's multiple different musical environments that someone like Jeff Beck has been involved in. And he's one of my favorite players of all time. He may be the world's best guitar player. I don't know. It's not been disproven. I can say that. Um, and he's been in all kinds of different environments. Music, and he never lets anything like pigeonhole him. Look at John Schofield. That guy never lets any one album like define what he's going to do for the rest of his career. If you don't like that, if you don't like the song that you wrote today, write another one. If you don't like the album that you're working on, write another one. Finish what you're doing. Be a completionist. You know, uh, perfection can be the enemy of productivity. And I'm going to leave you with that. There's been a lot to chew on today. I hope you enjoyed today's woodshed. My love goes out to everyone in the world. Any race, any creed, any religion. I love all you people, you know. Um, I think we need to love each other. I think in these times we need to, to focus on loving each other. And if you don't know how to love each other in any other way than to write music, I hope this is... This is, can help guide you and funnel your energy uh, to write some music. Um, be good to each other.